Yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? You're very welcome to this special online episode of Deck Chair and Yums. Fucking, I'm sitting at, at Taylor's uh, work laptop. Ooh. Are you? Hence, new suitcase behind me there, bought for the way home. Uh, I'm Rosen. What's Greg? <laughs> Have you had your teeth done again? No. Oh, I got them. Oh, I got them cleaned. Look at the, the lights on here, help too, right now, Vernus. Jesus Christ, what'd you clean them? My fucking torps. <laughs> that's a that's weird now, you know, because I'm I'm actually smiling with teeth in photographs. Like, uh, well, it's class you get used to it. <laughs> I'm not really used to it. I'm still doing a <laughs> people screenshot the fuck out of this. Dexter Dexter knows going to Hollywood. Smile on three, one, two, three. Sexy bastards. <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, here, how hot is it today actually? <laughs> 37 degrees on. Jesus Christ. We were, uh, we, I woke up in the car this morning, minus 3.5. You woke up in the car this morning? Let's talk about that, first of all. <laughs> no, she shouldn't put she, me I'm only away a fucking month and she's put you out already. <laughs> uh, no, that was the temperature in the car. Uh, no, that, fucking, that is, what's that, 40 degree difference? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I roughly, I. It's, uh, no, I think it's good to drop tomorrow because it's been a bit of a heat wave. So and I'm, like, I... I it drops about 28 more or something like that. Nightmares. Tell me this. Right. All together. Are you enjoying it, but Do you enjoy the heat? That's what I'm saying. I love the heat, Connor. Right? No, I I'm the heat still, wee burps. I don't know if I could do it. I'm still white, like. Guns or. No tan. I I no tan. I've lost a stone because there's nothing like walking up at a shopping centre in Perth to make you go, I'm a fat cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I thoroughly love the heat out here. Like, there's something real, and because it's coming straight, like it is kind of you can feel the, the difference in the shade. Right. Uh, but it's like every day when I'm getting up in the morning, going to the gym at half seven, eight o'clock, and I'm like that. And then you touch the steering wheel of the car, and you're like, that's fucking rosen. Um, I love it. I'm down to the beach a couple of times now, fucking paddling the water, trying to fight sharks. Did you actually go and wait for the bastards? I've been in a couple of times. I I mean, I have not in. There was one night it was down. We went down with uh, Taylor's mates, and it was a. This, we were going down to watch the sunset because it's a real class sunset down there, right? Getting all hippies and stuff. And uh, me and this guy Keith were just like splashing about in the water. And I went, "What time do the sharks usually come out?" And he was like, "Ah, about now." Oh. And I was like, "Well, all the best. See you later." Uh, <laughs> and then, like, do you know how? Do you know how when you're if you've watched Jaws enough times and you're in a beach in fucking Russian Isla and a bit of seaweed hits your foot. You immediately go, well, that's a shark. <laughs> Opa. It's the same it's the same sort of thing, yeah. They give you a shark's eyes, sheep, black eyes, like a dog's eyes. Yeah, I'll never put on a life jacket again. <laughs> Fuck, you're a braver man than me to hit that. I would not try that at all. No, I didn't go in deep. Like, I only went in up to about my shoulders. Um, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't even wait on my feet. And <laughs> Fuck it. Man. It's, the, thing, the things that scare me out here, it's it's not even the, the, the sharks, the animals. Like, this is, I said it to me, Taylor put a podcast up on Patreon the other day, there's a wee table out in her back garden, and I went, I think there's spider eggs underneath that table, and she just went, oh yeah, they've been there for ages, and it was like, big fucking white eggs, like, I thought spider eggs were just a, like a collection of web, like fluff, but they're actually fucking, they look like, eggs? you could crack them open, and like we make wee omelets. Like we quail eggs, and the wee fried egg ones, we get, we, we... you can't call them out anymore, man, it's, it's 2024, right? <laughs> it's we LGBT eggs, and you know yourself there. You maybe, maybe thank it's, you. It's the international uh, deadline, but it's quail. Oh, I thought you said quarter. That's quarter eggs, but <laughs> just in case I get the word quail at all. Because the word quail at all, they we were fucking quick. Yeah. <laughs> but and so what did did they just leave the the eggs there? They don't get rid of them. Where were you going to pick them up? Fuck that, leave them around. Oh, we'll leave them there for, fucking to fair, for them to come out? I think they've already hatched, to be fair. Uh, so it's just the dead eggs sitting there. But even still, I was at, uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. uh, But that's uh, the thing that scares me most about Australia now. What is that? It's the people. Let me <laughs> tell you this. <laughs> now, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the podcast I've done out here because you know, you know what I'm like. I just start sure. fucking mm -hmm. chatting chat. So Christmas Eve, Eve, the Eve of Christmas Eve, right? Mm -hmm. Two days before the Bobby Jesus come back, comes back or whatever the fuck. And we were doing a little bit of last one at Christmas shopping, right? 
got a load of stuff and I go, right, we'll drop some of this stuff back in the car and we'll come back in, do the rest of Christmas shopping, right? Mm-hmm. Hands is full. And Australians have, see whenever our car park's busy, they're fucking no problem just driving behind you waiting to see where you're going. Right. Do you know how, do you know oh, how at home yeah. you do like a sweep? Yes. Is he leaving? Is he leaving? They'll fucking sit and wait. Oh, right. Oh, no. But when you come we out like, and just... We like to pretend that we're in a special branch and we're just watching from afar. No, these fuckers just follow you and they don't make any kind of like, are you ringing? Oh, no. Just There's follow- none of that. They just fucking, they just start following you, right? So we're walking <laughs> about the, the car park, right? And I'm looking at Taylor and I'm going, here, do you know this cunt? Because <laughs> he's falling off their car park like, and I'm getting ready to ooze ooze. <laughs> and then without explaining to me that he was just looking at her space, she turns to the guy and goes, and I'm like, what happened there? She goes, oh, you didn't want the space, so I was just telling them the space wasn't available. And I was like, you have to understand, I'm from Northern <laughs> Ireland, right? So if, I, if we're down into a car park and some stranger starts following us and then somebody goes, yeah. You've been talking. You've been talking to people you shouldn't have been talking to, Connor. Even in, even in twenty twenty four, you still have that. Even twenty twenty four, fucking. You know what I mean? We haven't gone away or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I also saw Hell's Angels on a fucking mobility scooter. <laughs> them boys never quit, ride or die. Like <laughs> that's pretty much all I've done in the last month. <laughs> Don't tell me that they had it. Like I mean. The... They weren't out with the bike, uh, the biking gang, were they? Or did they get no, just by he, he was a lone wolf. He was a lone wolf, <laughs> riding solo. I'm a cowboy <laughs> on an electric horse. I ride. <laughs> I'm wanted, wanted. Type two diabetes. <laughs> well, but that's has that been that's been the summation of your whole journey so far uh, over there. Pretty much, man. Like I've uh, had my first boxing class on Monday. I uh, seen that picture of you up after now, now. How does that work in the heat? I don't know. I know that's a very stupid question, but like, is it not like ten times worse? It's it's horrible, right? So, first of all, the, the guy that was that was training me. He's great. His name's Alan. He's a great fucking trainer, and he's he's cute enough that if you do something cool, he gives you a wee pat on it. Like, oh look at you, you animal, yeah. And I'm all, <laughs> I'm an animal, right? <laughs> uh, we got to the end of it, and I was I was really really fucking nagged. And at one point, I was pouring fucking pouring my drink down in the back of my t shirt, trying to stay warm, forgetting that I'd put like high caffeine pre workout in it, so my back got all sticky. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then when I finished, I was like, I I was having to say to myself internally, just don't faint in here, just don't <laughs> faint in here. Get outside before you faint. Don't faint in here. Even don't faint in here. <laughs> right. And there was people in the gym doing like a circuit class, and I went to go. I first of all, I went to go outside to get a breath of fresh air. And as I'm walking, I'm like staggering. And there's people that are properly fit running in and out of the gym, <laughs> doing like laps, annoyed at me, like "Man, why are you fat fuck?" And then I remembered that when I got outside, it was fucking warmer outside than it was inside. So I went outside for a breath of fresh air. I just sucked in. Oh, yeah. It was like when you open an air fryer. <laughs> uh, so it, it was it was tight going. Like uh, every bit of was sore. Did you find it like this, this? I'm right in saying this. We've talked about this before. This is your first Christmas away, isn't it? Like away from Ireland. Mm-hmm. How did that feel? How did Christmas morning feel? Was it strange, or did you like it? It was or... just it's the same thing. You like you get up, you're like, did he come? Did he come? Uh, don't, don't talk about it. Then you and you wipe your chin and you go, I did indeed. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't really strange. It, it's did you miss the Christmas? It didn't feel, Christmas party? It, I missed the I missed the pints. Missed did miss the pints. I will say that. But also, having said that, on Christmas day before Christmas Eve or something, whatever it was, Christmas Eve we we were on the pool drinking bottles of beer. So that I mean, it was a yeah, okay. Yeah. It wasn't like I was having a shy time. Yeah, you weren't. Yeah, you weren't misery like. Do you know what I mean? But if I, uh, I suppose it would have been a, a, a just a very weird feeling. I suppose when you're so used to the cold here for what thirty six years, and then you. Do you know what the, I think the weirdest thing about it is for me because it's so warm, you don't feel like fucking eating as much. Okay. Do you know on Christmas you Day you're like fucking you get up, you, man? You get up, you have a fry, then you fucking nibble all day, and you have a big lunch, and you fucking have a wee sandwich, and you like, yeah, it was too warm. I you didn't really feel like it. And we went to Taylor's Italian side of our family for uh for Christmas dinner, and it, it was like it, it wasn't like turkey and fucking spuds. A wee bit of me was like, oh, what man, we better talk in spuds now. It was a fucking gnocchi and pasta, was it? What was it? Uh, I was gnocchi and fucking it was it was class. Like gnocchi. Uh, gnocchi I was just fucking... there with the pie. I was just there fucking breaking bread with the Byzan. I mean 
Met nog één. Dat is fucking mook. And everyone's just looking at me. Why is he talking like that? I don't fucking know, man. Hey, you fucking know what this fucking kid is. Never know he does six. Oh, you motherfucker, you. What is the uh, what 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 level of generation is the Italian link? Is it second, third, first? Yeah, I fucking don't know, man. They're all specs to me, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not actually too sure. Um, but there was there was, there was one of her, her uncles. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how old the guy is, and there's a part of me who was like, "You're a fucking dickhead," and the other part of was like, "I really admire you." So he's like, just been single his whole life, exactly what you think an Italian, like second, third generation Italian in Australia is, in his late forties, maybe, maybe even early fifties, and he's like fucking gold chain, we tight t shirt, lovely, like speaking Italian to his own mom, and his mom's like, "I don't know, the fuck, I can't sign." He's like, "Come on, me, yeah," and I'm like, <laughs> "I like it, bro." You tried to start the poker game, didn't you? I see what's happening. <laughs> You're a made guy. <laughs> are they going to open the books for you, are they? I think so, man. I'm going to have to whack a couple of fucking... Spiders? Whack a couple of inter- interior decorators and then see how you know. <laughs> oh, it makes me think of the interior decorator, the fucking... Uh, Pine Barons, Sopranos. It's one, of, it's one of the best episodes of any TV show. Anything at all of all time. He was in the tombs eating a packet of ketchup, <laughs> starving. He was an interior designer. Oh, <laughs> fucking! He was an interior <laughs> ministry. <laughs> of Russia. He said he was an interior decorator. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I must watch that again. Actually, um, yeah. So Although I think I'd do another round of Sopranos. Nah, it's deadly. It's fucking. Uh, it's, it's one of those ones where no matter what, when it's on, you just end up getting caught in an episode. You're like, oh, I'm right. gone again. And the worst thing is that uh, Dodgy Box has the has a like twenty four seven channels, so they play uh-huh. a program or whatever for twenty four seven, and one of them is Sopranos, and you're like, oh, for fuck! Oh, so it's literally on all day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's been unbelievable. So tell me, the uh, we well we had a normal sort of Christmas. It was pretty regular. Um, any big? I didn't even ask you right now. I was all fuck Christmas. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I mean, we should know that by now. <laughs> Uh, any big New Year's Eve party? No, what was the story there? Because you obviously were what eight hours before us. You, I so you're in the future, Mac. Exactly. I so we went out to um. There's a Mexican place out here that I. It's unbelievable. The place where I first had the birria tacos. Oh right. Uh, so went out there with a couple of other comedians and a few tailors mates, but I I knew I was stopping drinking the next day. Right. So, Uncle Mac was on a mission. Mm. I was. Blocked before we left the house. <laughs> and then one of the other comedians obviously saw the look in my eyes and was like, oh, it's one of those parties. So at one point, we had all this food, had all these cocktails and stuff. I went to the toilet and came back. I was smoking fags because it stopped vaping. And I was like, I'm smoking fags New Year's Eve. And then that's when he done with the nicotine. Michael. And when I first smoked, that's what it was, my first cigarette. I only smoked about five in the whole of New Year's Eve, to be fair. That was all right, actually, yeah. Sure. Uh, and then I came back in and somebody bought me some cocktail where... I don't even know what was in it, but there was a bottle of Corona in the glass of the cocktail. Oh. So I started drinking that, blew my sideways. Then I'm like, do you know what would be dead funny? If I go up and ask, if I go up and ask the bar staff to sing Happy Birthday to Taylor, because it's not a birthday, it'll be funny as fuck. And I went up to the bar to ask for that, and the guy behind the bar was Irish, and I was that drunk. He was like, what the fuck are you saying to me now? I <laughs> some <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, Happy New Year, everybody. I think we were home for about 10. Uh, <laughs> was that Taylor a couple of, of choice, did she? Well, no, because it was like, oh, no, I was all right. Because again, out here, they don't fucking. Oh, they don't know how to they drink. They can drink numb, hey. Don't know they can right. drink numb. <laughs> uh, so, two of the ones we were with went home early. They got engaged. The other two left early. And then I was like, go on your under, Happy New Year, pack on your under bed. I ain't going to phone home. And I think I set up about half two, shit face like. Uh, and then the next day, I think. Oh, I got I three tech with. Right, probably. I <laughs> if, if I didn't message you, even people listen to this, and I didn't write to you individually, go, I fucking love you. I hope you have a good year. And there's a message waiting somewhere. I thought I was getting a unique message, but obviously not. <laughs> just any cunt got one. <laughs> Jesus was talking to every fucker. People don't even like. <laughs> Hello, is that the Hitlers? Listen, <laughs> I just want to wish this 
a fucking happy, happy Lebensstraum. <laughs> Steaming it was. Now, not say that I haven't drank since. I've had two nights where I've had a, I've had a couple of wee drinks in the pool. Ooh. Um, the pool is the pool at the house. Yeah. You wake up in the morning. There's a pool out every day. Ah. Uh, hmm. I definitely would be. As opposed to waking up and a pool of my own piss. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's an, it really is. I'm having I'm having a real hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's that? You're drinking? Is that? That's not beer, is it? That's sparkling water with pineapple flavor. I mean, all right, my guy. Sparkling uh, water with pineapple. You're going to fuck. I mean, you get down to the beach and get my shark neck. like, <laughs> hey, you can't swallow a fucking guy for a dip. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, you, you said you lost the stone. Is that from the last time you recorded that podcast? Um, fuck you, right? It's here's the problem. <laughs> I know what. Who, I have two answers, actually. One, yes. <laughs> and two, the camera I bought so... Man, the amount of fucking money I spent around about trying to get podcast equipment just to, to do it the way we used to do it, like old school with one camera and fucking uh-huh. Louise Zoom recorder. And we ended up... I bought a lens for that camera that I've had since August, but you can't zoom in on the camera. So we're, right. you're trying to get the right angle in with a tripod. Right. <laughs> so then every fucking shot of it, it comes from the knees up. Plus... I was I did wear sixteen and a half stone by that <laughs> like somebody sent me a message because why does Taylor look like Jeanette Cranky? <laughs> oh, she was wearing a party shirt leave her alone. Fuck her, who, so, who said it? Who said who said about being a princess? The, it was the problem with the uh, it's the proportion. As you say, it was the way the lens was it's the, it's the angle of it. The angle of it, so it looked like the where were... my my stomach was fucking huge. Like because <laughs> there was a point where <laughs> Well no no was but honestly because I, I think over Christmas, between drinking and then just eating, and even whenever Taylor was over in Ireland, I don't think we cooked once over three months. Yeah, there was a lot of eating. Yeah, you know what I mean. There was a lot of fucking new much. relationship, a lot of eating out. You know what I mean? uh, yeah. But because I any weight I lost in Edinburgh, I put it all back on, like slowly. So it kind of crept up. So I was like, it's grand, it's grand, it's grand. It's fucking fed on. Uh, the slow raise is the worst one. Trust and me. And then wed myself on New Year's Day, and I was sixteen stone eight pound. Was that? That's what... this morning. It's not my. It's not my heaviest. I think I've been up to. I've been, I was closer to seventeen before. Like, yeah. fuck. Yeah, but that was like when it, during. I think maybe just after COVID, right. and then there was a point whenever that when the urge to asses was bad, and I would have been like a lot heavier because mm. I was just sitting around eating shit and drinking. Um, what are you down to now? Fifteen seven this morning. Fucking nice, man. I don't, I no all of that's fucking lettuce and chicken, and I've been in the gym six days a week. <laughs> uh, I haven't gone down a trip. Lose, like, lose a stone. Lose a stone in three weeks, and I haven't. My clothes still don't fit me. <laughs> Devastated. I've just had a sweaty ass for fucking three weeks. I've still got ditties. I and thought at some point. It'd... I've always worried. I that's probably maybe subconsciously why I'd never go out there because I would feel so fucking massive. Uh, that's why I like America because not in Perth. I right. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Perth is full of stinkers. Like. Uh, all the good looking people from Perth moved to Melbourne and Sydney, uh, so you don't feel too bad. <laughs> but every so often, you just see a model and you're like, "Fuck!" Uh, uh, clothes. I think it's just are like, they, are they are they a lot more? You know the way if we go to America, you'll always get like designer clothes cheaper because they're over there. Or whatever is that the same in Australia? Or are they extortionate price? It is. The, it is the minute because the dollars weaker than the pound, right? So it's I think it's one ninety, one point ninety a dollar or something. Oh. So there, and then there's like there's a couple of there's a shop called Connor, funny mm-hmm. enough that I I enjoy going to, and it's uh the 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 stuff that you get out like I think the Australian clothes one are better they're better quality so if you buy stuff out of like their version of Primark, it'll last you for years, right. but because they're so summer conscious and body conscious, the the clothes are I usually find are cut a wee bit better, so they're cut around your arms so you look all fucking all juicy around the biceps, uh-huh. but they're loose around your stomach so you can fucking hide it. Like it. You want to see some of the shorts I have? Fucking that wardrobe in there, sir. I'm fucking afraid to see what's going to come back. <laughs> Walking about looking like Tommy Bahama. <laughs> like From your shirt choices were already per <laughs> over here. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know what you what's going fucking on. bought me half my shirts, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, we have... Uh, yeah, we... Uh, 
we had the, the episode last week with McCarney and uh, now I've only seen the Rory. first five minutes, <laughs> five ten minutes, and when Roy McSorley, McSorley, Crossman's boy, Crossman Bay, referred to our podcast as some sort of weird hairdressers, I thought, see you, <laughs> yeah, mouthy dolphin bucking can't you? <laughs> I know, man. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get it sorted between now and next week. Where I've, I've pictures and all that to go up and take that age off it. I think it's the wallpaper. Right, right enough, because right enough, because no hairdresser has fucking pictures up on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> they just happen to be of L'Oreal model. You know what I mean? I mean, that's... <laughs> uh, yeah. just a load of Greek fellas. Like that. giving to me. I don't know. Uh, with, with, with a high fade. <laughs> Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if we could paint over that gold wallpaper or something. I think the wallpaper was a bad. I, I like. I like it. I think it it's ours now. Je, 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 je je ne sais quoi. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and and for that scruffy ruffian to come in sitting on, which I believe is a better chair than any one of us has ever sat on. What fucking Jean Luc Picard swivel chair was he on? Oh, he was on Nev's. No, the, the that Nev's chair. We're Nevs. paying him too much man. At ne- no, nah, that's that's one of those ones where McSorley was told, "Don't move an inch left or right, <laughs> or you'll land your fucking hole." It's falling apart. Just fucking right, and him <laughs> slagging off my wee McCarney. Sure, I know. Well, he tried to. McCarney was more than ready. That's a boy. That's a boy. <laughs> Slap a fucking teeth out of my McCarney. McCarney didn't know what the fuck hit him. He did. You could see the look on his face at one point. He was like, "What the fuck is this boy going on about?" <laughs> see, this is one of these situations now, right? Where, I. Is he like that off camera? Yeah, that's him. That's that is just legit him. That's him, yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not doing a Andy Kaufman deep dive character thing. That's no, that's genuine him. Yeah, that's astounding. Perfect. Him. I I don't I don't want to be flipping and call it like, you know, like a mental health thing or something. But there's definitely he's had experiences. It feels like over the last number of years that has shaped his manifesto. What are you looking? What are you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. Go on ahead. Nope. <laughs> um, but there's definitely, you can see the things behind some of his thinking, you know, in regards to like how marriage should work and how politicians should work in the church. So he has all these things that he obviously has seen that he doesn't like or, you know, that he's had bad experiences of or people he knows. Where's he Where's he from again? Marriage is a field or whatever. He's from, I think he's originally from Park in, in Derry. Um, but right. I, I think he spent time in Donegal maybe. Like he went to, they went to Lumen, like which is one of the best schools. Uh, you know, they have to be fucking pretty high grades to get in there. Aye, but he was going to school a little bag for a school bag. Remember the video I seen it? Uh, I know. And here's the thing too, it's a weird one because he's such, he is a good guy, I have to say, uh, the guy I spent... He seems like a lovely fellow, I'm, I'm just slagging, but he, he does seem no, like a nice I, But he, and I, I said to him that day, because people were like, oh fuck, what are you bringing on home for? I was like, well, I kind of, kind of was a wee bit drunk on the Christmas day in Tyler Motel. <laughs> <laughs> is that how it happened? <laughs> and then the next week, whenever he was on chains and all the rest, and I was like, oh fuck, I can't, he's on everyone's. So I matched him, I said, my light. We're, we're going to have to cancel it. And I, I I postponed it. And then I had the idea of McCarney because I thought that's the only way to make it different than the rest of them. Um, yeah. To see what it'd be up I for. I have to be fully honest with you. There were, I was only away three or four days and you were all out to hang out with Frostbite Boy. And I thought, if they ever place me. <laughs> no, there's no replacement, Mike. Although, oh, uh, although, no, it'd be, it'd be a ladies' man, you know. You would I? You wouldn't. Like, sorely. You wouldn't think it now, but no, so they, they seem to they seem to they seem to fall to their charms. But like yourself, you, you know. respond to the frosted tip. <laughs> uh, yeah, love bite boy more like huh? <laughs> you definitely wouldn't be long getting rid. And I put the gun. But yeah, no, he's he's a good skin. But I, I just I, you know. I think the problem is that he's kind of been, as we know, that the viral video fucking hoisted him into, you know. I but that was a, I mean, that must have been a weird thing to, because that like, you know, I think back when I started hanging about with Colin, and he was going through that with the bar the blender stuff, and like, it must be a very fucking weird thing to happen. Excuse me, especially out of fucking nowhere when you when you didn't ask for it. Yeah. 
and it's back to that thing we we used to talk about we get this as well was it's it used to be in the good old days was you were rich and famous but now it was like right. you're famous but not rich so he had all this sort of attention but no money to go with it no yeah you know and he's starting to you know he's trying his best now he, he's calling it the resurrection but he's basically what i would call it is a, a, a full-on publicity drive like he has right. been really working this is his thing he I just get worried about him. You know, there's there's talk of people backing him, you know, financial backers and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's usually, if people are financially invested in something, that's usually not good for the person that's being used. All right. Fuck yeah. you, man, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Saying no to us or whatever happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't ask. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're too good for school. That's why we don't have one. Do you know, do you know what I'm only after getting done to me, Connor? What? Three things. One, Taylor took it in my nose while coming on the extractor. Got all the blackheads in my nose, right? Oh, I don't know that. Right. I've never I've never looked better. It's disgusting, isn't it? What comes out? I fucking couldn't believe it. I, I actually was going, I'm sorry, I'm putting you through this. <laughs> I had no idea there was that many that mm-hmm. much, like shit in my nose. But you know what I found today? You found, found hers on my back again. And like not down the bottom where your wee doormat is. Mm-hmm. All up around the, oh, the shoulder no. area, you know. Patchy ones. So, uh huh. I was out trying on a new floral shirt, and I says to her, I says, Here, when, when we get home, you know, take into me with a pair of tweezers. She said, Do you want another hand job? I says, No, my back. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have gone yeah, the, the back with tweezers, would you? Fucking right. I was looking stuck in. But sure, with that, I'm but, thinking, but I, I use the tweezers for the eyebrows, but I wouldn't use it for me. Fucking, I wouldn't use a load of hair. You just have to shave it. No, I says, listen, twice it, because I'll tell you for why. It was that painful. It will scare the her and they're not growing back. That's science. Love it. That is. You know what I mean? That's pure science. That's pure science. Absolute. 100%. Brian Cox, I didn't tell you that. Always put the hands <laughs> in the You got the clocks part right about it. <laughs> yep. Do you know I mean? Stephen Hawking, God rest him. He'd have been there. <laughs> Don't fucking dare. Uh, he's a pedophile. Fuck him. What I've what, what have I warned you about? Fucking falling for that shit. No, he's not. I know, right? No, you're right. The wind can change too. <laughs> I always say, don't worry about the, to... don't worry about the plane flights or the flight logs. I want to see the submarine fucking list. <laughs> Who was brought? That's a good point too. And what about these tunnels? Man? Man? Ah, a few tunnels in there. Let's I'm getting a warning here. To say, again. Just the timing of that. I've got a warning here to say we're running out of time because Zoom only gives you a certain amount. Ooh. We'll do a stop and start again then. Do you wanna to... I will wait. It's got nine minutes left and we'll see, so we'll be right. Okay. Um but yeah, the tunnels uh, are... <laughs> I know. Every time something like that happens, I'd be just sitting at the house going, <laughs> Fucking tell you. Uh, it's, it's terrifying. Ah, it's weird. And like and even people are still like going, they only built it during COVID, but you know, oh they did, yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. Sorry, when it, how to do that during COVID? Everybody's locked in the house. <laughs> yeah, I think unless you're I, unless you're a little, little <laughs> we Jewish minor tea worker. Oi, I gotta <laughs> dig these tunnels. It's a very important job. <laughs> all day and all night I dig. That's all I do. <laughs> Oi. The uh, it's yeah. like when we left Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean that's another one to add to the list of things that fucking warn people about. But uh, I kind of do, you know. I feel sometimes I feel a bit vindicated, but the times I go, "Fuck, I remember you slagging me." Not you, but I remember people slagging me about mentioning things again. But, yeah. But now I'm seeing clips of all the other podcasts going. Fuck, did you see? And I'm like, oh, all right, oh, okay. Uh, who's mad and loud? Yeah. Yeah. You thought we were crazy. You <laughs> thought we were fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. Just in case TikTok's listening. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a guy I'm going to try and get on the pod out here. I've gigged with a couple of times, and he he's he's one of us, right? In, term, in terms of that sort of stuff. So we'll hopefully we'll do it something in the next few weeks. Right. So I think it'll be a very interesting chat. Excellent. Um, well, apart from that, I mean, we've got uh, you've been you've you've had gigs over there, haven't you? You've done a few already. Well, a handful. So. I had a load of gigs on the East Coast when I got over here in December. So I did Brisbane, uh, Sydney and Melbourne. Right. And that was all of the expats, you know. Oh. Uh, and then I've come out and done a couple of gigs 
there's a couple of spots around around Perth and stuff. But again, very like so the, the three that I did out on my own the solo shows, mm-hmm. great gigs. The Sydney Comedy Store is one of the best gigs I've ever done. Then I got to Perth and you get on stage and you go, oh, I forgot I'm I'm not very well known out here at all. And oh. you have to like remember how to do stand up again. Uh, I was, was going to ask, how does that work then in regards to how does it, how does it work for you? Do you get the vibe when you like you knew the other shows were going to be expats, but like when yeah. you when you're booking a comedy club in Paris, you know it's not going to be expats. So how do you how do you adapt? Do you have to do you, do you do what we have to do like in Edinburgh? Do you have to speak slower and all? I definitely speak slower. I I think like you know, I had my first experience, first time it's happened to me in a long time, where I was standing after one of the gigs and somebody came up to one of the comedians and went, "You were brilliant," and then looked at me and went, "All right." <laughs> Oh, it's been a it's been a long time since oh, that happened. Like the fucking, I was the, like, the oh, fuck, we're back here, we're back here, shit, shit. Get you home, day fuck. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> uh, but it, it kicks off the the Perth friend kicks off this Friday, um, so that's gonna be a good. Grab. I think I'm doing three gigs a day from Friday onwards now until right, okay, the next three weeks or something. Uh, tickets are available for my. Friend shows, Perth friend shows, 24th, 28th of January in the Oasis Comedy Club. Please tell people if you know anybody in Perth because there's fucking no cons coming. <laughs> uh, what, 24th and 28th of January? 24th to the 28th, so it's the okay. Wednesday to Sunday. Okay, right, yeah. Uh, uh, well, what we'll do is we'll we'll finish this episode and then come back and do the... We have a few questions in, so it should be a short enough. Uh, Probably did. But uh, I don't know what this is going to sound like, what it's going to... If we're even going to look like that, and what's going to be like? So, we'll finish this now, and then we'll we'll come back uh, with a bonus uh, episode. So you've got twenty fourth to twenty eighth of January. What, like, okay, sorry, before we go any further, what f- fucking did I hear? You're buying a dog? No. Somebody asked the question for me and Taylor. If you had a dog, what kind of dog would you get? And mm-hmm. now everybody's like, "Are oh, you just getting a dog?" I wouldn't. I wouldn't give birth a dog in that height. Right, that's all right. Wouldn't be right. Because I know uh, to you, a dog means a child. So if you're planning to have a child in Australia... You want to fuck a dog? Why do you want to <laughs> fuck a child? They're hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there must be people keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, you can't argue with that one. On that note, we'll just finish up. Right, we'll have some questions here in a second. There'll be hot children. Right. 